So what makes a good turntable? Before we can talk about this, I would like to refer back to the, what I mentioned in the previous video about how records are made. Remember the story about the lacquer disc and how grooves are cut onto these lacquer discs? Now think about the vinyl records you have at home, which are an exact replica of those lacquer discs. If you think about this, all you really want your turntable to do is to reproduce the information that is contained in the grooves on your record. Nothing more, nothing less. It shouldn't add anything, nor leave out anything. This may sound simple, but it's actually not so simple to do. Let's have a look at the different parts of a turntable to explain this further. When we move the platter of this debut carbon, we see the motor that makes this smaller subplatter spin. The two parts are connected together with a belt. Now obviously any motor that runs produces some level of vibration, no matter how small that vibration may be. This is due to different parts inside the motor, such as bearings. Project makes their own motors, like they produce any part of this turntable themselves in their factory in Europe. But even if they produce all the parts used in these motors to the tightest possible tolerances, and trust me, they do, there will still be some small vibration produced by this motor when it turns. That is why you see these suspension components around the motor. They absorb and dampen these additional vibrations of the motor very effectively. The motor is then connected to the subladder with a belt. This rubber belt also acts as a dampening device for vibrations. This belt further dampens residual vibrations of the motor so that they're not transferred to the subladder. This is one of the reasons why Project uses a belt drive system in all their turntable models. Now let's have a look at the subladder. I'm going to remove the belt for a moment. When I remove the subladder from the bearing shaft, you actually feel some sort of resistance that is holding it back. It feels almost like there's a spring inside. There's actually no spring. If I pull it off, you hear this little plop. And that plop is due to air being trapped in this bearing. Now imagine a metal spindle right here in a sintered bronze bearing shaft. How precise and to what precise tolerances these two components are made, so precise actually that air gets trapped into that bearing. As you see, when I put the subplatter back, it takes a couple of seconds for it to settle down, which proves how precise and how smoothly the surfaces of the bearings components are made. If the inside surface of that bearing shaft and of that spindle wouldn't be super smooth as they are, you would hear a grinding noise coming through your loudspeakers when you play a vinyl record. This would be bearing noise. And we don't want that, of course, because any noise made by the bearing or the motor would be picked up by the stylus when we're playing a record. Another important part in all this is the plint. The plint is the base chassis where all these components are mounted upon. All project turntables have heavy and very rigid plints made of materials like MDF. No plastic or hollow cavities here, because such a lightweight hollow plastic plint would simply amplify any noise made by the drive system. And what we want is just the opposite. We want to plint to further absorb any unwanted resonances. With the bigger turntables, you will even see heavier plints. We call that mass loading. The heavier the plint is, the better it can absorb resonances or vibrations that we don't want the cartridge to pick up. The final important parts, of course, are the tone arm and the cartridge. The tone arm 
has to allow the cartridge to move freely across the record when it's reading the information on the record grooves. That means the bearings on the tone arm have to be very precisely adjusted so that they do not cause any restriction in that movement. Such a restriction would result in mistracking, distortion or even worse skipping. It could also cause premature wear to the stylus and damage your vinyl records itself. At the same time, we also don't want this bearing to have too much play because that would cause unwanted resonances which will be picked up by the cartridge again. Another important factor in a good quality tone arm is the material the tone arm tube is made of. Project uses carbon fiber as a tone arm material in many of their turntables, even entry level models like this debut carbon. This is very unique, unheard of actually, at the price point of this turntable. Carbon fiber is a very rigid, low mass material, ideal for use in tone arm tubes. Combined with the conical shape of our tone arms, it effectually makes our tone arms free of unwanted resonances that degrade the performance of conventional tone arms. And last, but certainly not least, there is the cartridge. Many project turntables, like this debut carbon, come with factory installed high performance cartridges made by Autophon. Since 1918, Autophon is the global leader in the manufacturing and supply of phono cartridges. No cheap, poor quality, cost saving units here, but award winning models like the OM5E, 2M Red, and 2M Silver which is actually specially designed by Autophon for project. All these cartridges are already correctly installed and aligned on your turntable in the factory. So that makes it very easy to set up your turntable and enjoy listening to analog music. We'll talk more about how to set up a project turntable in another video.